I'm Daisy. And I'm Terry. And this is the Monday, Monday Mindset, Mindset Podcast. Podcast, where we talk about things of interest to us and hopefully to you. So let's get started with episode number 29. It's Terry's turn to share something that she's found interesting this week. So what have you got for us today, Terry? Well, Daisy, it's an episode from a podcast that both you and I have talked about enjoying, and that is Brene Brown's Unlocking Us. This is actually a two-episode part of her podcast, so I have the extra task this time of boiling down two episodes um, (laughs) into one, but actually it's similar to yours last week, which was a two-hour episode anyway. But what I'm going to try and do is really focus on some of the key points, because this is actually from a training that Harriet Lerner, who is a psychologist and very prominent a psychologist in the field, has done a lot of writing. She and Brene Brown have done kind of a training course together, and this is part of that. So I'm going to try and focus on the key points so that it can be things that we can just try to approach in what we learn from this. But again, very valuable episodes. I think everyone would enjoy listening. And of course, I may be a bit biased. I just enjoy these two people. I enjoy listening to psychologists, go figure. But it's a really great set of episodes if anyone is interested. And the episodes are called How to Apologize and Why It Matters. Uh, Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I do actually remember. It was a long time ago I listened to them, but I remember being pretty blown away and thinking, yeah, this would make a really good episode for Monday Mindset, but it feels too big (laughs) for me to tackle. So I'm glad you're the one who's tackling it. (laughs) I have a very full whiteboard of notes here, (laughs) so I'll cover the things that hopefully can help us. So the first thing to really think about of why an apology, why is this something that we should even work on developing? And one of the things I enjoyed listening to these episodes is both Brene Brown, who I have an utmost respect for, and Harriet Lerner, who I have read for years, both talked about how apologies are difficult for them. And so again, when you hear people who talk about it as experts, when they can acknowledge this is not easy, this is something we actually have to give ourselves time to work on and and be compassionate with ourselves is really helpful to me. But they talk about the idea that apologies really are a gift. They're a gift that we give to the person we hurt. It helps to calm and soothe, helps them to release the negative energy or tension around a difficult event that occurred. It lets them know that we care and that we'll listen, that what, how they feel affects us. And it provides some emotional safety in that relationship when they know we are willing to hear them and apologize when we've done wrong. It also validates their reality because unfortunately too often we are hurt by something and when we express something about it, someone just tells us that we're just too sensitive or that's not really what they meant. We shouldn't have taken it that way. But an apology, a good apology, actually helps validate their reality. They talked about the idea that really apologies are also a gift to ourselves because by being vulnerable and reflecting and being willing to make an apology, we grow in our maturity in self-respect, integrity, and bravery. They're not easy to do, especially if they're done well and they're not just perfunctory. And then also they're a gift to the relationship. The safety of a relationship they talk about really rests on our ability to repair difficult things because we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to say and do things that hurt each other. And the idea that if we don't repair those things, obviously that deteriorates the relationship. So apologies are really important in this. And we probably all know the opposite of a good apology. A bad apology or no apology leads to people cutting off with the hurt feelings that they have to then distance in the relationship, or it leaves some negative pieces behind from that event that just continue to kind of form a wedge in the relationship. 
And a bad apology also can deepen the injury that already occurred. And so this is why it's important to really learn good apologies. They talked about kind of nine ingredients. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because I think they're all pretty logical. And then when you and I discuss, we can come back to them. An apology should not include the word but. Mm -hmm. We all know that if I say, that's a great shirt, but it would look good in blue. I just negated the first part. So if I say to you, I'm sorry, but you really irritated me with what you did. I've just told you I don't actually mean the apology. And in that case, I also turned it over to you. We should apologize for what we did, not for the other person's feelings or response. And I know you and I have talked about this. When someone says, I'm sorry, your feelings are hurt by what I said, it's really not owning the behavior. It's really kind of putting it back on the other person, the hurt person, and saying, hmm, sorry, you got hurt. Versus, I'm sorry I said something that hurt so bad. Very different message there. A good apology includes an offer of reparation. It offers kind of, what am I going to do about this? Will I change this behavior? Because a behavior that we don't believe is going to matter beyond when it's given isn't helpful. A good apology should not be an over-apology where people say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or they just keep rehashing it and keep saying it over and over. That's overkill and it takes away from the sincerity. A good apology doesn't get caught up on who is to blame or who started it. Apologize for your part, even if the other person doesn't see their own part. They may never acknowledge it. Your good apology still matters. A good apology requires that you do your best to not repeat the behavior. Again, if I keep doing the same thing, I'm obviously not really taking the offense seriously. An apology should never be given to serve to silence the other person. Like, okay, I know, I'm sorry, can we just go on now? That's just trying to get them to you know, move off of the difficult feeling, stop resisting, and do what you want to do. And so it should never be used to silence a person. A good apology should not be offered if it risks making the other person feel worse. Harriet Lerner says, you know, basically not all apologies are warranted. If I've said to you, look, our friendship or our relationship needs to be severed at this point, I need time away, and then you come back and want to keep apologizing to me, at this point, it's not a good apology because now you're crossing the boundary of I've said I want no contact. Mm. And so, um, again, you're doing that apology for you at my expense. They spent a good bit of time in these episodes talking about what doesn't work for us in making apologies. And you did a podcast episode on this topic before, and that is defensiveness. You know, basically we listen for what we don't agree with while someone's telling us their feedback, because we're coming up with our retaliation to show them why they're not right, to show them why what we did was okay. And one of the quotes Harriet Lerner had in one of her a book about this, she said, if we would only listen with the same passion that we feel about needing to be heard, hmm. so if we could put more emphasis on listening, hmm. not just our desire to be heard, that we would improve our interpersonal relationships significantly. So they talk about defensiveness, that it's important that we recognize it when we're getting feedback that we're going to you know, someone's giving us difficult feedback about something we've done or said, we should breathe, bring ourselves to whatever calmness or mindfulness that we can be, slow ourselves down to get out of that defensive place. Listen only to understand, not to retaliate, not to prove or disprove, but listen to understand the other's perspective. In their feedback, find something you agree with, however small that is, and start their with the understanding and the apology. Let them know that you heard them and that you will continue to think about what they've shared. So they really get the sense of how important this is to you as well. Thank the person for sharing. Obviously, it takes a risk to give someone feedback that you know they probably are going to have a hard time hearing. And so if you can say, I'm a little bit defensive right now, but I really appreciate your being open with me and sharing this feedback with me. That goes a long way. And then also to define your differences. Sometimes people struggle to apologize for something because 
the two people involved just see things differently. And she gave an example. They did a role play in one of the episodes, and they did an episode of like a mother and daughter argument. Oh, yes, that was brilliant. Yeah, and in the argument... Mm, then they redid the, it. The first time through, it was very problematic, and the mm. second time, it went much better. But the daughter was accusing the mom of when... The mom and the dad got divorced, that she wasn't available to the daughter, and she said dad was drinking all the time and basically was kind of accusing the mom that that was her fault. And the second time around when it was working much better, the mom said, okay, and I'm going to stop you there. This is a place where you and I see it differently. You see that I did this and I see this. And then own your part. So in that next step, she said... I will own my part. What I did, I wasn't available for you, and that wasn't right. And she gave many other examples. But I won't take ownership for your father's drinking. He's an adult. He's, you know, responsible for that. So it's okay to define differences without negating the other person's experience or way of interpreting it. They also talked a little bit about why people sometimes don't apologize to you when you're wanting the apology. And one is if you're kind of seeking the apology, almost does the blame and shame that they're going to be less likely to feel safe enough to give a good apology. And they used an example of after a bad work interaction, the employee went back and wrote a long email to the employer telling them how they had handled the situation wrong. And it was very much shaming and blaming and that that's not going to get an apology. It's just going to help that person blame you more for the problem. And then also to keep in mind that when you do choose to confront a situation that you maybe feel you are owed an apology or you just want the other person to know how problematic the situation was, remember that that is for your experience of hearing yourself say it You've done the thing you know is right for you versus doing it to get a specific response because that always sets us up for more problem when we kind of, I'm going to do this so that she'll say this. It's not usually the way it works. So these are some quick, you know, highlights of two great hours. And I think all of us could take some of these little pieces even if each time we apologize, we might not go back through the list of all nine things, but just reminding ourselves of some of these important pieces or steps, I think, could really help us do better in our relationships by offering sincere apologies that don't, that they're not just done out of obligation, but that they actually carry meaning. Yeah, it makes me want to go back and listen to it again, because I can remember how much impact it had on me the first time and hearing you talk about it makes me want to go back and re-listen mm -hmm. and I think the I think a couple of the big things that I took away from it but it's the it's the last thing you mentioned that something that I certainly really really struggle with is how to how to stand up for yourself, how to not necessarily, like you say, you're not necessarily asking for an apology, but how to actually bring up the subject when somebody has done something that's hurt you and actually speak up for yourself and you not necessarily demand an apology, but say, hey, look, you know, what you did, those things you said, whatever it was, you know, they they really hurt me and instead of letting it just fester <laughs> mm -hmm. i need to tell you about that that that's something that i'm not sure i've ever been able to do actually mm -hmm. and i am the kind of person that will keep going over it will keep ruminating on it will keep having that kind of conversation and i remember actually when i was listening to that episode one example came back to me you know with with a friend who treated me a certain way and I really should have spoken up and said something but it's how to do that mm -hmm. if you're somebody who doesn't really shies away from confrontation shies away from awkward conversation it's one thing when someone brings that awkward conversation to you 
when it's something you've done wrong. In many ways, I think that's a lot easier to handle. Mm -hmm. Your first reaction might be to get defensive and all the rest of it. But I think it's easier actually to get over those hurdles and work on being a better apologizer Mm -hmm. than being the person that takes that awkward conversation to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That That's always felt like a, a step too far, too difficult for me to do. I don't, and I don't know quite how to get over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. And I think what you just mentioned there about when you're bringing that subject up is getting it clear in your mind that you're not expecting an apology. It would be nice. That is kind of what you want from the conversation, but that's not your expected and relied upon outcome. I guess what your aim is, what your goal is, is just to let that other person know how they made you feel. Absolutely. Would that be a good way to approach it? Because like I say, that's, I don't think it's something I've ever been able to do. (laughs) I take it to be, it's, um, it goes back to what the quote from Harriet Lerner, but it's that need or want to be heard. Mm. And so regardless of how they're going to respond, and that's where it feels so vulnerable to do. If I risk telling you something that hurt me that you did, I want to be heard. I want to know that you value that feeling I'm experiencing. And the fear is I won't be heard. I will be blamed. I will be dismissed. You know, some negative experience with that. But I might encourage you to also frame it as this is good self-care. By addressing it, I'm helping set the tone so that it doesn't keep happening with this person. And so, you know, that old saying first time, shame on you, the second time, shame on me. And so if I don't help teach you how to treat me, if I don't let you know, doing that or saying that is hurtful to me, I'm not teaching you how to interact with me the next time. And then I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but I start to feel bad the second, third, fourth, 25th time it happens because I didn't make it stop. Mm. It's like I just waited for that other person to change the behavior. And that's not good self-care. Good self-care is I let you know, hey, that's not okay to talk to me in that way or this really hurts so that we can set that personal boundary so that that behavior doesn't get repeated. Yeah, I think, I mean, even worse with anything that's repetitive behavior Mm -hmm. because you then get into that cycle if you're the one who's feeling aggrieved Mm -hmm. is, well, I've lost my opportunity now to say something because this is the fifth time it's happened. Right. And so again, I think it's important, maybe it's the third time and you now feel like, whoa, this is a pattern. It's okay to bring it up and say, this has happened before and I I just needed to take some time, but I feel like it's important to share it with you now because it does a lot of damage when it happens. Mm. And in their conversation, you may remember this too, when they were talking about defensiveness, Brene Brown said this is a really hard one for her because when someone says, you know, every time you do this, it hurts really bad. She's like, well, when? When did I do that? Now, you said one week ago, but now you said it was two weeks ago. When? Like she gets into being a litigator versus listening to understand and to say, you know, maybe ask, can you share an example when I did that? You know, can you share a time when what I said really hurt your feelings so that you can learn? And so, you know, if you put yourself in the other shoes there to be able to say 25 times you've said this to me versus when this happens, it hurts my feelings and I have a hard time not disconnecting from you. Then that person, if they're hearing it, can might say, can you share an example with me? So, you know, you can hear in that example, you already are being heard, Mm. taken seriously, and hopefully they're not going to just defend against it. But I I think I would just encourage you to think of it as boundary setting and self-care rather than the word confrontation. Mm. Yes, I guess it goes back to using the right words and the right images. If you're thinking about it as a confrontation, that's Mm -hmm. what it's going to be. You picture clash. Absolutely. Mm, mm. You picture not going well Mm. versus me expressing myself, me being heard. And again, that doesn't always get the response we would hope for, but to still know my expressing it still matters. I heard myself set my boundary. Mm. I took care of me. Yeah, and the fact that you've been heard, you've voiced Mm -hmm. it, even if it doesn't get the 
the optimal outcome, mm-hmm. just getting it out mm-hmm. is is the biggest part of it, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think from the other end, I think they said it was, you know, it was okay, especially if you are feeling defensive as the person who owes an apology. It can be okay to take a bit of time mm-hmm. or to ask for a bit of that, say, you know, actually to be honest about it, this is making me feel really defensive, but I I know I need to apologize and I want to apologize. I just need to take a bit of time mm-hmm. with the information you've given me and sit with it and really think it through to be able to come back with you with an apology that is meaningful Absolutely. to you. I, they think that's okay, isn't it? You, yeah. it there's no need to have to give that genuine and valuable apology in the moment when you're not feeling it it's actually okay to say you know I kind of in a way I need to sort of go and think about and prepare Mm -hmm. this properly because I value you enough to give you the apology you deserve versus you know I'm just not going to talk about this to let them know wow I'm feeling flooded right now I'm having a pretty strong response but this is really important to me And so I want to come back and discuss this more and understand more. I can't right now because it's just too much. But thank you for sharing it with me. And I do want us to come back to this. I think that's a great strategy. So I think for me, my biggest takeaway has been that this has reminded me that I would really like (laughs) to go back (laughs) and listen to those episodes again, because I remember having some some takeaways from it. And I can remember actually changing my behavior in the way I apologized, especially with that sort of conditional apology or that apology with that slight deflection in saying, you know, I'm sorry you were hurt by what I said. And I can actually remember applying that fairly soon afterwards, just saying, instead of saying that, which is what I would have done before, I said, I'm sorry I hurt you. Mm-hmm. I'm taking ownership. It was my actions that hurt you. I may not have intended it any particular way, but I hurt you and I'm very sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So I can remember applying some of their tips directly shortly afterwards. So yes, I think I need to go back and listen again and find some more things to apply. So that's what I'll be doing next week. I think that one stands out for me as well. Because it sounds like an apology, Mm. but it's really not. And so I think I'll need to keep listening for those moments when I feel drawn to do that and give a better apology. So I hope everyone can take some tips from this episode and use them to continue to improve their interpersonal relationships. And I hope you have a great week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.